Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. Today we're taking a look at trivia for several Game Boy Advance games. The GBA was a tyrant in the gaming market after its release, and one of our favourite handheld devices. It's easy for younger gamers to overlook the improvements the device had over its predecessor, but it gave us access to portable games that matched the quality of titles seen only on home consoles just a few years earlier. Nintendo's crafty little machine brought several highly produced and high profile games that despite being on a small scale, continue to have a big impact on those that played them. As a series that was always at home on Nintendo handhelds, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire was perfect for demonstrating how the system could expand on an already pocket-sized adventure. As with each new Pokemon iteration, the amount of lovable creatures the player can collect was greatly expanded. While many are now fully aware of the lineup introduced in Ruby and Sapphire, they weren't always set in stone, even after the game had entered full development. In 2020, an early beta for the game was leaked online in what became known as the Giga Leak. By exploring the data of this early version of the game, several unused Pokemon were revealed, though without any graphical data, only descriptions. Pokemon number 298, which in the final release was Azuril, was originally planned as a grass-type shrub Pokemon with a sprinkler motif. Did you know gaming's own Dr. Lava commissioned an artist's interpretation by Rachel Briggs based on the descriptions revealed in the leak? The creature's Ruby Pokedex entry reads, It collects a large amount of water inside its body and sprays it out like a shower while rotating. It is convenient to have around on hot summer days. And the Sapphire description reads, It drinks over 100 litres of water a day. When the water it has collected in its body gets low, the leaves on both its hands wither. Another Pokemon of interest is Rayquaza, which actually looked somewhat different during development. Initially, the creature would have been white, scaly, had a beak, and would have measured up to only half the size of what Rayquaza would ultimately be. This image was also commissioned by Dr. Lava and drawn by Rachel Briggs. But before we get to more trivia, today we have quite a useful sponsor for those wanting to import games or just buy cool merch from Japan. Baiyi is a service that places orders or bids on your behalf on Japanese shopping and auction sites, then ships the items to you. This includes sites like Rakuten, Amazon Japan, and Yahoo Japan Auction. So if you want a rare game that can only be found on Japanese auction sites, this service would be perfect for you. Baiyi is easy to use and offers support in several languages, of course including English. They also ship all around the world, including North America, Europe, and Oceania. Baiyi have over a dozen international shipping methods, multiple payment methods, and four different insurance plans to match your needs. Not only this, but Baiyi are giving Digino Gaming viewers a 2,000 yen, that's about $18, first time purchase coupon for signing up through the link down below. So if you want to try out this great service and get 2,000 yen off your first purchase, check out Baiyi using our link. And now, back to the trivia. Many pocket monsters may be cute and small, but what could be any cuter than the lovable Crescitony, Hamtaro? Hamtaro Ham Ham Heartbreak not only appeared on Nintendo's Game Boy Advance, but even referenced the Big N's own Legend of Zelda franchise. In the cove located in Sunny Peak, the player comes across the slightly overused trope of a sword stuck in a pedestal. In order to pull the sword, the player must first locate a red, blue, and green marble to place within the pedestal, in reference to Ocarina of Time, where Link must perform a similar act to unleash the Master Sword. This reference is backed further by the music that plays once the sword is drawn. Combining both small stature and Zelda together, you'll inevitably land upon the Minish Cap. Meredith Lord from over at Zelda Universe put together some interesting information that perhaps people might overlook from the Minish Cap, particularly surrounding the Hylian language and how it is used throughout the game's library area. Perusing the tomes on the second floor, where the player comes across Sturgeon from Wind Waker, it's possible to read the Hylian language on the spines of the books. This language shares its formatting with that of the Wind Waker, which corresponds to Japanese Kano. Many of these books' titles simply translate to predictable titles like Ancient Civilizations and a Flower Encyclopedia. That said, one book actually translates to Bucket and Hose. Now, this is a pretty weird name for a book, 
but it isn't the result of poor translation, but rather a reference. In Wind Waker, the fisherman refers to the Triforce as the Triumph Forks, which in Japanese can also be translated to Bucket and Hose, a play on the name for the Golden Relic. We know all too well that references are all over the place in games, and although they may mostly give a nod to other media, some reference real life and are significantly harder to uncover. With Star Wars Flight of the Falcon, it's possible to unearth more about the people behind the game with an extremely bizarre and out of place method. Entering a cheat code by pausing the game, holding L and R and pressing up, right, A, start, A, down, A, start, start, spelling out, you are a sad ass, the game will automatically unpause. Pause. After this, if the player quits back to the game's main menu, goes to the password screen and uses the code F4CE, leet speak for face, a new hidden menu will appear revealing a series of portraits of the developers at Pocket Studios. Another game release for the GBA actually does something similar, though in a more difficult to approach fashion. While Star Wars incorporated a full menu for hidden photographs to be found, Spirits and Spells takes a more obfuscated approach. Within the game's data are some standard JPEG format images which can be unearthed, though there is no code to display them in-game. Four photographs can be found, with one of the subjects seen across the images believed to be Clement Cord, an in-house programmer for Magic Pocket, the game's developer. This is based on the first image having Katakana for Kuremon, a possible take on the name Clement. These images actually have quite a bit of exposure, not just appearing in Spirits and Spells, but the first two images can be found in the data of both Road Rash Jailbreak and Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance as well. Sometimes references to the real world aren't so much the real world, but a digital world, the realm of the internet. Before the internet, as many of you know it now, people would communicate through user groups, a sort of proto-message board. These days, popular content goes viral through social media, but back in the old days, it used to be spread around on forums or through email chains. It was a simpler time that, if you experienced being pulled into an email chain, you probably wouldn't miss. That said, some bizarre elements from this time continue to have a presence years later. With The Hobbit for the Game Boy Advance, it's clear that the devs over at Sapphire enjoyed one story that made waves across the internet, a story about monkeys. The story can be found within the data for the game, inaccessible through normal gameplay means. The reason we know that Team Sapphire enjoyed this story in particular is because it also appears on another GBA game they developed, Hot Wheels Velocity X. The story is 500 words long, so we'll briefly summarize it to save time, or you can pause the screen if you want to read the whole thing. Essentially, the writer likes monkeys so much that he bought 200 for 5 cents a piece from a pet store. He then explains his ventures in handling such vast quantities of monkeys, and how one might think that purchasing so many monkeys may have been a fun experience, but it isn't all it was cracked up to be. That said, it can provide unexpected returns and teach you how to handle unfortunate situations. When it comes to video game censorship, most titles that end up getting censored are those being localized into English from Japanese, and the censorship is almost always to remove lewd or risque imagery. However, with Idra Union, the opposite is true, with a rather revealing bath scene having more on display in the NTSC release than its Japanese counterpart. The image is covered with additional foliage in the game's Japanese release, not present in the US version. This also remains true for the later PSP version, though the Japanese version has been altered so that rather than foliage, Yggdra can be seen draped in a cloth, also not present in the US version. And now it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia. We thought we'd take a look at a game that surprised quite a few. Ubisoft decided that Just Dance 2020 would not release just on modern platforms, but also the Nintendo Wii, a console that was not just out of production, but which hadn't seen a new game since Just Dance 2019. And before that, <laughs> Just Dance 2018. The reason behind the game's choice to release on a system which is no longer supported by its manufacturer was assumed by many on social media to be the result of the game's position as a physiotherapy tool for patients with limited mobility in hospitals. Polygon spoke with Ubisoft to confirm the game's release, with one representative stating, It would be inaccurate to say that Just Dance is available on the Wii solely because it's developed for physical therapy purposes. Just Dance 2020 is coming to the Wii because our audience wants it. It was reasoned that the publisher chose to release the game for the Wii 
because of the system's wide availability, and because much of the title's audience are either families or children who continue to play the Wii. Ubisoft has been known to donate consoles to children's hospitals along with copies of Just Dance, so it isn't too surprising that the company is willing to meet demands from their main audience on Wii, but it does also lend itself to keeping their earlier donation of Wii consoles current. Did you also know that many Nintendo games were cancelled on the GBA? For more Game Boy Advance facts, check out our video on cancelled Game Boy Advance games. <laughs> I don't know why I said that like that, but <laughs> that's the take. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Did You Know Gaming and more trivia and more facts. How about that? Just Dance, huh? The last three games released on the Wii. Love it. I think that's great. Bye. Like and subscribe. Do it. It really helps us out. I mean, it actually does. It's really good.